The drug development is lengthy and expensive, taking decades and costing billions of dollars. One major challenge is ensuring drug safety and efficacy by understanding how the drug is interacting with the body. In my research, I use positron emission tomography, or PET imaging, to optimize the process by selecting appropriate dosing in preclinical trials. This could reduce the number of clinical trials needed, reducing time and cost. Drug doses are based on an estimate of affinity, which is how strongly the drug binds to the target receptor. Think of affinity as a lock and key mechanism, where the key is the drug and the lock is the receptor. Just as an appropriate key that would unlock the door, a drug with the right affinity would bind tightly to the target receptor and generate strong therapeutic effect. Now imagine you're overseeing COVID-19 vaccine distributions in the States. Looking in the population density map in A, would it be wise to send the same number of vaccines to every state? Of course not. Just as how COVID vaccine distribution is depending on population density, the drug affinity in the brain depends on factors such as population density and variation of the receptor subtypes. It may be shocking, but pharmaceutical companies assume that brain has a uniform affinity and estimate a constant uh, affinity for the entire brain. In my research, I challenge this idea. In B, we studied the drug CVL-865 that has potential to treat epilepsy. This drug has varying affinity to different parts of the brain, which we were able to detect using our methodology in human study. So how do we know our results are accurate? To validate our methodology, we conducted a simulation study shown in C. We generated simulated fake data that would generate an affinity map that has regional variation in the brain. This image, shown in C1, acted as the ground truth for comparison purposes. Using our methods, shown in C3, we were able to accurately detect this regional variation in affinity compared to the conventional method of estimating a single concentration for the whole brain, shown in C2. This shows the accuracy of our methodology. We believe our methodology and findings have the potential to enhance drug development in early phase trials and potentially could lead to better dose selection with less side effects.